Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon Spoilers video. So, over the past couple of days, we got some really new and exciting cards, so let's just dive right in and talk about them. First up, uh, we have a new version of Koromon as one of the new Digitama in the set, and this Koromon is actually really, really good. Like, this Koromon is probably what Red really needed, and it's definitely going to see quite a lot of play. So what this uh, Koromon is doing is it has a really nice when attacking skill once per turn. If this Digimon's name contains Greymon or Omnimon, then you get to draw one card. The big thing that Red has been lacking a lot of is card draw, and the fact that now we have a Digitama that uh, gives us some additional card draw is definitely going to be really, really good, and as such, this card is going to be really, really good for not only just the Omnimon Turbo decks, but also for, like, Greymon-themed decks. So anything that's using Greymon can use this card, and that's just really, really good. On top of which, just drawing cards is really, really good, and this is exactly what Red really needed. Next up, we have Sunomon. So Sunomon is a pretty good Digitama for Blue, considering Blue, like Red, has been lacking a big aspect of it, and uh, Blue hasn't really had a whole lot of ways of DP boosting their Digimon. The fact that Sunomon can help DP boost uh, your Digimon definitely makes this card uh, really, really interesting. I don't know if it's going to see a whole lot of play just because they already have so many cards to draw cards, but I definitely think this is a really good Digitama to be thinking about for Blue nonetheless. So Tsunamon has a when attacking skill where if this Digimon's name contains Garurumon or Omnimon, then it gets plus 1000 DP. So uh, for the Omnimon Turbo decks, this would probably end up being like a really good 5th Digitama, just because uh, getting that 1000 DP boost could help you uh, win security trades against the opponent's Omnimon in their security or their level 7s and their security, and then on top of which, this is just really good for the Garurumon style decks, where it'll boost all of their DP as well. So Tsunomon is definitely looking to be a really interesting Digitama for blue, and I definitely like it quite a lot. Next up, uh, we have uh, Mori Shelmon. So Mori Shelmon is a green vanilla card. I don't think that we've seen the stat line before, so it's definitely a really interesting stat line to talk about. It has a play cost of 6, which is on the higher end, but that's not anything uncommon for green. On top of which, uh, it has a Digivolve cost for 2. So this is on a champion level, so its evolve cost is about average. It's not like terrible, but it's not like amazing. Uh, and then it has 7,000 DP, which actually is very quite rare to see 7,000 DP on a champion. So this means uh, that uh, Mori Shaman is definitely looking to be a more aggressive champion, where you're going to want to uh, digivolve up into him and then use him to start aggressing onto the opponent relatively early on. I don't know if that strategy is actually going to pan out, just because green already has so many hyper-efficient cards where they'd rather just digivolve for one into uh, a champion and then digivolve for two into a higher stage and then kind of just start getting the ball rolling, but the fact that they have a really aggressive champion definitely is something noteworthy. Next up, we have Megidramon. So Megidramon is a pretty interesting Digimon just because he has the ability to Digivolve off of purple and red. So we already know Gallantmon has both purple and red forms. Same thing with the Giyomon lines, so Megidramon showing up isn't like that big of a surprise, especially him being in purple. So he is definitely a pretty interesting Digimon on his utility and usability there. And then on top of which, he has 11,000 DP, which is very average for a Mega, especially with an Evo cost of 3. And then he has two pretty nice abilities. So his first ability is a when Digivolving ability, where you get to trash uh, the top five cards of both players' decks. So this is really, really strong because it synergizes with both Gallantmons. So uh, you mill five from the opponent, so that way the red Gallantmon gets ever so closer to his on attacking ability, which needs 10. And then milling five also just uh, allows all of your Gilmon stuff to start coming online. So he's really, really good for that setup. And then in purple, he's just filling up your own trash. So that way you have multiple different options 
that you could potentially pull from for the Chaos Gallantmon's revive ability. So he's really good for both decks in different ways, and then on top of which he even has a nice on deletion ability, where if you have a tamer in play, you can play one level 6 Digimon that contains Gallantmon in its name from your hand or trash for free. So this is a really, really powerful ability. Yes, you do have to have a tamer in play, but again, if you're playing red or purple, it's very easy to want to play tamers because their tamers are relatively good. And in red, especially if you're playing a Gallantmon deck, then you kind of need to be running a red tamer anyway. So that part of the ability isn't going to be hard at all. And then the fact that you just get to play a level 6 Gallantmon for free is just really, really good. The only downside is that you don't get its when Digivolve ability off of either of the Gallantmons, but the fact that he basically replaces himself with another free Mega that is going to be stronger than him is definitely one thing really, really noteworthy. So not only do you just use him to set up your Gallantmons, but you also use him to help play your Gallantmons, and the fact that this can pull it from the hand or trash is definitely something very, very powerful, especially in like purple, because they could set up their trash really easily, or in red, if he just is checked in the security, then you could go ahead and digivolve up into Megidramon, and then you could also try to use his mill 5 ability to try to hit a Gallantmon off of his mill effect. So there's just some really, really interesting applications on how to use this card, and I think this card is going to be really, really good, not only for the uh, purple Gallantmon decks, but for the red Gallantmon decks as well, and he is just a fantastic complementary mega for those decks. Next up, we have Metal Garurumon. So Metal Garurumon is going to be in black this time, so we could probably guess that uh, Black War Greymon is going to end up in purple, but regardless of that little speculation, uh, Metal Garurumon is definitely looking to be a pretty solid Digimon. So uh, stat line is nothing really too special to talk about. 11 to play, 3 to Digivolve, 11,000 DP. Again, nothing really unique there, but he does have uh, two really decent abilities. So his first ability is he has Reboot Innately, so that's just already pretty decent because Black already wants to be playing with a whole bunch of Reboot and Blocker Synergy. So him just naturally having Reboot just helps along with that game plan. And then on top of which, he even has a nice when Digivolving ability of Digiburst 2. And then his Digiburst ability is you get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon that has a play cost of 6 or less. And then if a Digimon wasn't deleted, then you trash the top card of the opponent's security stack. So this is really, really good because you're either going to be using his ability to remove a champion or below, so you could potentially use this to delete a blocker. This also kills a whole bunch of weaker ultimates, so like this can kill a Monzemon. So just having a really solid removal ability is very, very nice to see, considering Black has already had a huge problem with the lack of removal, so the fact that they're getting a little bit more removal now is definitely really, really good for the color. And then on top of which, if you aren't able to delete anything, then basically being able to burn the opponent's security is also a very, very powerful ability, because we don't really have uh, a whole lot of uh, abilities that just get rid of security. So this, again, whether you're using it as removal or to burn the opponent's security, is just a really, really strong ability, and I definitely think this card is going to see quite a bit of play as a result for the color of black. And then the last card that we got from the past couple of days is going to be Hot, Furious, and Metal Storm. So this is a one-cost option card, and its main ability is uh, your Digimon with reboot get plus 1,000 DP and blocker. So there's that whole, like, blocker reboot synergy. Uh, this lasts until the end of the opponent's next turn, so that way you could use uh, the blocker ability to also block the opponent's stuff after you aggress with your reboot side. That's just really, really good for the blocker reboot decks, but outside of that, it's just a very stereotypical 1000 DP boost, but it only works on reboot Digimon. So that's one thing huge to note is this just does not work on anything that doesn't have Reboot. And with the limited amount of Digimon that have Reboot, I don't know exactly if this card's going to see a whole lot of play. But its security ability is definitely really, really good, where your opponent's Digimon can't attack a player for the turn and then add this card to your hand. 
So this is just a very, very good security ability. Uh, we've seen something like this before on Breath of the Gods, where basically it's just the same thing, except this card gets added to your hand. And I feel like this isn't necessarily so much better than Breath of the Gods, as it's just trying to do a very similar thing. The big difference between this and Breath of the Gods is Breath of the Gods is just a very good blanket protection, and it also gives it your Digimon an ability whether it has one or not. So that's just one really big thing to the card, and I think Breath of the Gods overall, its main ability is definitely a lot stronger than uh, Hot Furious Metal Storm, but uh, the security ability on Hot Furious Metal Storm needs to be a little bit better as a result, just because uh, the main ability just isn't going to be doing a whole lot, or potentially isn't going to be doing a whole lot. So I don't necessarily think that this is better than Breath of the Gods. This is just another take on that type of ability for the security. But I definitely think that this is going to be a really interesting card, and uh, depending on how the rest of the set looks up and how black develops as a color, I think this is definitely going to be a really interesting card to think about nonetheless. Even though traditionally we've never really seen these DP boost cards get a whole lot of play, and we haven't really seen just a whole lot of options get played in general, just because it's more advantageous to just play Digimon with ability rather than just trying to play one-and-done option cards. Some option cards are still very, very good. I just don't know if this is going to be on that level of good where it's going to see a whole lot of play. So that's all we got over the past couple of days. I definitely think these spoilers are really, really good. I think that uh, these cards are definitely not only just helping whatever new decks are going to be forming, but are bringing some good uh, breath into some older decks. And I definitely like uh, where the set is going. And I definitely think that these cards are going to be really good in some capacity. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, uh, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.